together today on this, the second Sunday after Epiphany. So a hearty good morning to all of you here today. I noticed we have, so the Perrys were over there and now they're over here. Don't you know that Lutherans never change their seat once they find it? <laughs> no, okay, well, 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 it's good. It keeps me on my toes. So good morning to all of you and uh, as we gather together today on this January day in Manitoba, what is, what's going on with the weather? We have a cold snap followed by an Alberta clipper, which is going to be replaced with Arctic air. It just, yeah, you know how it is. <clears throat> that cold, cold stretch that we did have, that one was something else, wasn't it? It, it, was, it got to the point where I was actually trying to get into a heated argument with someone, with anyone, just to warm me up a little bit. I was goading my wife, getting to to oblige, trying, but she didn't. So, um, but we have to stay positive. We have to stay positive with this Manitoba January weather. There are no mosquitoes to bother us. There are there is no grass to cut. And if you drive in Winnipeg, I'm going to be positive. Like if you drive in Winnipeg, it's not so bad because all the potholes are filled in with ice and snow, right? So there's always a silver lining in the cloud. You just got to look for it sometimes. But enough about Manitoba weather. Just a couple of items uh, so that everyone's informed as to what's happening in our church in the, in the days to come. We are having a Bible study here Thursday, January 20th. Thursday, January 20th, the Bible study is at 2 o'clock here at the church. It's one that we've already started and stopped because of COVID. And then we started it and stopped it again because of COVID. And we're starting it again. The name of the study is You Will Get Through This by Max Lucado. So if you have not come to the previous sessions, you certainly can come to this one because I have to do a refresher so that everyone remembers what it was we were talking about. So I'm going to do that. And um, if, so please feel welcome to come, even if you have not previously. I just ask that you register at the church ahead of time at, through the office so that we know how many people are coming. And then we can set up our, our space appropriately. We are also having a Theology on Tap group. My, my silver group, I call it. Silver meaning the older group. You don't actually have to have gray hair. Um, Wednesday, January, January 26th, we're going to be having that. Here at the church, please register again. But on that Wednesday, January 26th, we are going to be talking about forgiveness. That is the topic. And please know that because of restrictions and because of COVID and because of the fact that hardly anything is normal anymore, we are, I'm going to throw away the silver part of it. It's just theology on tap. So if you want to come and you're not, whatever age you are, just come. That's it. We're just calling it theology on tap for now. So we're going to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness is very powerful in a positive way when you can do it. And it's very powerful in a negative way when you cannot do it. We are going to look at what is forgiveness. We are going to look at what is not forgiveness. We are going to take a look at what the Bible says. The book of Romans has a lot to say about forgiveness, among others. And then we're going to be giving out some practical things for people to actually use in their lives in their faith walk, that might help them when it comes to forgiveness. So if that is of interest to you, please mark that on your calendar and please know that you are welcome. Next Sunday, so today is a contemporary service. Next Sunday, we are going to be having a traditional worship service and at both, both services. And we are going to be bringing back some aspects of the service that we haven't done for a long time. We weren't able to sing for a while, so we, we dropped certain aspects of our liturgy. So next Sunday, we will be bringing back the Canticle of Praise. You might remember that. We are also going to be bringing back the doxology. So we obviously can't be passing the offering plates around. That's not smart when it's, you know, it's not smart viral practice. But we will be bringing, the ushers will be bringing the plates back from there, from the narthex 
to the altar, the way they used to, and we will rise and we will sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I forget, I really, really um, miss that. And uh, it's just a, a beautiful part of the service. But we'll be doing that uh, just so you know what's happening next Sunday. That is all the announcements that I have. Are there any to come from the congregation? Seeing there is no further announcements, I'm going to invite you to please rise as we continue with the gathering, which is based on today's assigned psalm, Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. And we continue with confession and forgiveness. Lord, we come before you, aware of our unworthiness to be called your sons and daughters. Hear now our prayers of confession. God of love and mercy, forgive the sin of our thoughts, words, and actions. Forgive the sin of what we have done and left undone. Forgive the sin of all that we are unwilling or unable to understand. Forgive us. Grow faith and love in us. You are able to grow faith in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. You are able to forgive us because of the saving actions of Jesus Christ on our behalf. You call us into ministry with one another to draw people closer to you and your purposes for the world. Let us pray together. Lord God, Source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our opening song this morning is entitled, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Yeah. 
I invite the congregation to please be seated. Even though we are not experiencing a ton of children in our worship at the moment, at the moment, we are still having Lisa Wilson put out some children's lessons for us. This service right here, right now, is being live streamed, so we know there are young families who will be watching. So let's listen to what Lisa Wilson has prepared for our children today. Hi everybody, it's me, Lisa Wilson, back with this week's children's lessons. So, this week, we move out of Luke, out of the Christmas story and Jesus' baptism, and we move on to now, when Jesus is older, just after his baptism, and we're going to, the gospel today is in John. Now, today's story is the story of Jesus turning water into wine, and a lot of people think they know this story pretty well. But I think about it. We live in a world of fast-paced news. Something happens, and we all know about it through social media, through newspapers, through news reports, through TikTok videos, through Insta posts, through all the things. We hear about it right away. And... Today, this Bible story of Jesus turning water into wine, I think it would be fascinating for something like this to happen in today's age of instant news. So, I'm going to tell the story the way instant news would tell the story. All right, are you guys ready? Hey, guys. Did you hear about John and Sally's wedding this weekend? They did not plan well, and they ran out of wine. Now, who does that? Who doesn't plan for enough wine? But then, this Jesus dude, I don't even know who he was. He walks over, and he tells the staff, Hey, see those empty containers? Go fill them to the brim with water. And they kind of look at him. And they do it, because, well, they need something to serve. If they don't have wine, people are going to be thirsty. And then when they do it, he's like, all right, well, scoop some up and go bring it to, to, to the groom. Bring it to the master. And when they bring it, he tastes it, and it's the best wine. People, who keeps the best wine for the end of the party? That makes no sense. You have the best wine at the beginning on that head table. Saved it to the end, but it wasn't because he saved it. It's because Jesus made wine from water. Can you believe this, people? Anyone, if you know that Jesus dude, have him PM us, have him contact us. We want to hear from him. End news story. All right. What do you think? Was that really the important part of the story? We know that's what the newspapers would report. Jesus might get a mention in that we want to talk to him. But really... They'd focus on the wine, the wine, the great wine that came up at the end. But really, that's not the key. That's not what we really want to pull out of this story. Now, a lot of people focus on the fact that Jesus turned water into wine. And that was his first miracle. And that is a very important part of this story. This is the beginning of Jesus' minute. We talk about Jesus got baptized, then he turns water, and this is his first big thing to the world, saying, I am more than just Jesus, the son of the carpenter. When he was baptized, we heard God's voice say, my beloved. But this was Jesus' first act, and it was his first recorded miracle. And that's awesome. But you know what I think is really cool in this story? Jesus wasn't known 
to be Jesus yet. He wasn't known to be this miracle maker. He wasn't known to do all of these things. But he told the serving staff, fill those stone crocks with water. And they went and did it. And once they had done it, they said, he said to them, and those I will read, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. So they didn't know Jesus was Jesus. They didn't know that he was going to be the guy that became known for doing miracles. And yet, he asked them to do something, something that seemed a little weird, something that didn't fit their thought process of what it should be. And they turned around and did it. Kind of like the wise men. They saw a star and they traveled. They didn't have angels talking to them. They didn't have some great messenger say, go find the king, other than they read the stars. And here these guys, and I'm saying guys, could have been girls, these people, they just did what Jesus asked. And in doing what Jesus asked, they played an integral role in the start of Jesus' ministry and in the beginning of those miracles. And they were a part of that miracle and making that miracle happen. And what does this mean for us? This means that last week we talked about using the talents that we've been given to give to the church. This week... What this means is we need to open ourselves up to listen when God asks us to do something, even if it maybe seems a little bit odd. But if God is telling us, saying that's what you should do, and we participate, we can be a part of Jesus' miracles today. So I want you this week to listen for God's voice and see what he's asking you to do. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to experience a miracle too. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, worker of all miracles, work a miracle with us today and allow us to have open hearts that we see you inviting us to be a part of your miracle. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening, everybody.